to move on. And brothers and sisters, I want to suggest that we learn how to test the brooks around us. I said we need to learn how to test the brooks around us to make sure. Y'all hear what I'm saying? To make sure that there is still water in them. Sometimes I know it appears that the grass is greener on the other side, but you need to make sure you check your water. That brings us to our text. God told him to get up and go to Zarephath in Sidon. Now, what was so significant about Sidon? Well, perhaps it was because Sidon was Jezebel's hometown. And Jezebel was Elijah's greatest enemy. Perhaps God wanted to establish a bit of poetic justice, poetic irony even, to let us know that he can and will keep us and hide us even in the territory of our perceived enemy. God can move you and cloak you. I wish somebody would receive what I'm trying to say. God, listen, God, has anybody, mm, has anybody ever been in hostile territory? Oh, okay, all right, all right. I said, has anybody ever been in hostile territory where you know folk don't like you? I'm talking about places where you know they got a bullseye on your back. Anybody ever been there? God will send you to enemy territory and cloak you. Where people, I was, um, I was, I was, I was on the elevator the other day, um, and one of the managers of, uh, well, I'm not going to do all that, but one of the managers of where I worked, my other job, uh, got on the elevator had my ball cap over my head, and I had my casual clothes on, and I had my head down looking at my phone. And they got on the phone, and they got on the uh, elevator. Nobody recognized who I was. And I started chuckling to myself, because if they recognized who I was, they would instantly start speaking. Hey, Commissioner, how you doing this, that, and the other? But they didn't. They kept talking amongst themselves, and I was just looking at my phone, and I looked up, and I was just smiling. And they, they got off the elevator. They didn't even look to me as if, as if I was not even there. And that's what God does. He will move you into enemy territory. Not that I was in, in ter enemy territory on the, on the thing. Those were friends, not foes. But even your friends won't be able to see. You, you can't understand it unless you've been there. But God will put you in a place where you know folk don't like you, and they'll walk past you. They will, they will keep on working. They might even help you or say a kind word because they don't even realize who you are. So if God is, I said like this, if God is leading you, I said if God is leading you, don't worry about going into enemy territory because if God sends you there, he's going to cover you. He said, over, over in Sidon, um, there's a woman there, a widow woman. I want you to go there, and I want you to meet her. And um, God appointed this widow, this poor widow. Um, she was destitute. She was desolate. But God appointed this woman, this poor woman, to house the prophet and to sustain him. Some commentators suggest to us uh, that there may have been many widows in Israel in the day of Elias, and many of them would have been glad to house, the hot, the, to house a bona fide prophet. Uh, but it seems as though God sent Elijah to the poorest of the widows in town. And you know the story. But what was going on while... Elijah and his widow were having this conversation. God, as Jehovah Jireh, was bringing Elijah to his next source of divine provision. 
God was bringing the prophet to his next source of divine precision, provision, causing the widow woman to meet him at the gate of the city. Understand the overarching lesson here. God sent the prophet to enemy territory to get some food from the poorest of women. She actually had two sticks. Uh, not only to bless the prophet, but in the midst of it all, he blessed, blessed the widow and her son. See, God, when God, when God begins to bless you, God blesses the ones that you are attached to. Did y'all, I said, when God blesses you, God blesses those that are holding on to your, your coattail. God blesses your whole house. And so there's no, no wonder why your children and your grandchildren are being blessed, because God is blessing you. So they are getting a direct blessing through an indirect source. Now, maybe they're not even saved, but God will bless and keep them because of your life and the call that God has on your life. In fact, if I flip this thing, sometimes God is blessing some of us because of who we are attached to. We're not walking alone, brothers and sisters. We are all intricately woven together. And so God will bless people and those that are associated with those people. That's why, that's why the old saints used to sing the song, Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. The character of a woman ready for a miracle. The character of a woman ready for a miracle. This woman was very poor. She was very humble. She was very resourceful. Um, she, she, she had nothing to live on but a handful of meal, a little bit of oil. She gathered sticks in the streets. Obviously, her son was too young to join her. God had the audacity to send Elijah over to her to live off a one meal a day miracle just like he did with the ravens that fed him. Now, this is not to suggest that we all must be broke in order to receive a miracle, but I believe that this spoke to the nature of the woman's spirit. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We can see that this woman was a very humble and resourceful woman. She found her gathering sticks, and she began preparing to bake her own bread. She dared not to complain about her situation. She made the best of the miracle, of the situation rather, that she was in the very best of her ability. She did all that she could with what she had. She had no idea that God was getting ready to work a miracle in her life. You never know when God is going to work a miracle in our lives. We don't know. We don't know. Yes, there are some of us here today that don't have much to live off of. Uh, some of us have to make do with precious little. And yet I prophetically declare that somebody is getting ready to walk right into their miracle. Now, some of you all are just thinking that I'm reading words off a piece of paper, but about five of you caught it in the spirit because you have to speak those things that be not as though they were. And I'm going to say it again. I believe that I believe that somebody is getting ready to receive a miracle in your life, not because I said it, but because God said it. You never know when God is going to work a miracle in your life. You never know. It could be today. It could be next week. It could be next month. It could be years from now. But there's a time and a season, I believe, in all of our lives
that God steps into the ordinary and begins to do the extraordinary. He's not doing it so that, so, so that you can show off in front of your friends. He's doing it to bring glory back to him. Lord, help us today. God is getting ready to give us a miracle. She didn't complain. And that's what we got to do. We got to stop whining and complaining. Now listen. I'm not going to be one of the preachers who tell you what y'all need to do. I said we need to do it. And the reason I include myself in it is because sometimes in my prayer life, I hear myself whining. in my prayer life, and I get sick of my own. And I remembered last night, I, I was just sitting on the floor. And I was just in that place, and I always just subconsciously tell the Lord I thank you. And I, I remember last night, I said, Lord, I'm not going to ask you for, uh, for anything right now. I just want to tell you thank you. I know I told you about all my problems. I didn't told you about all my issues. I didn't told you. I didn't ask you. I didn't beg you to turn stuff around. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't whine. I tried to make a deal with you. I tried to strike a deal with you. If I can do this, can you do that? You know, I tried to just speak those things into existence, and apparently wasn't the time for it. So right now, in the midst of all of my situations, everything that's going on all around me, I'm not happy about some things just had to perform a homegoing ceremony for one of the leaders of the church. I'm not in a good place, but I'm going to sit here in this floor. And all I'm going to say to you is thank you. I, I'm, I'm going to steal uh, uh, a story that I heard. Um, uh, oh, Lord. Let's see here. By uh, Pastor Howard uh, Wesley, yeah, and he said that uh, he was talking about what was not fair in life, and he told people, uh, you should not whine, be whine and tell people what's not fair. Um, Howard John Wesley said that he was pledging when he was in college, and um, he said while he was pledging, the ones that were over the uh, fraternity instructed the, the pledgees whatever y'all call them, to uh, take easy classes during that semester because they were going to be quite busy late at night. And so he went and found one of the easiest classes that he could find, uh, and he enrolled in the class. The class, uh, he was, he's African-American. The class was instructed by an African-American. He assumed that if he had any problems, he would be able to slide by. Well, as time went on, sure enough, he went to class, and uh, in the evening time, he was going through. What do they call it when they when they pledge they pledging? What they call it? Initiation. All right. While he was going through initiation, at the end of the semester, uh, Pastor Wesley said that he got a B minus on his grade card, and he was quite perturbed by it. And uh, he went to his instructor. He said, "Look, uh, Professor, just wanted to say to you that." Uh, I, I, I'm not appreciative of this B minus that I got. I don't think it's fair that I got this B minus. Um, you knew, I told you before I took the class, you know, I had some things, some commitments that I had to take care of. And uh, so I'm just come here to see if we can work something out. The teacher says, well, let's look at the uh, record book. He says, um, the, the uh, syllabus says that you, you, can't, you can't miss any days of class. And he said, and my records show that you missed a day of class. And the, the, the syllabus says anybody that misses a day of class, it lowers their grade by one whole letter. So that knocks you down to a B. All right? He says, and then you had three late assignments uh, that were there, and that knocked you down to a C. He says, you were sleeping in class three or four times would cause you not to, to miss the lessons. And he says, and three or four times you turn in your homework late, which dropped you down to a C minus. 
he says, um, and then there are some other assignments here. He says, should I go on? Pastor West says, stop right there. I'm going to gladly take my B minus. <laughs> and he was making the point that we need to be glad that sometimes God's not fair. Y'all didn't catch what I said or what he said. He said, you better be glad that God's not fair. And so when I hear myself whining at nighttime, when I'm praying to God in my one-to-one -one devotion time, and I am journaling and I read stuff, and I'm saying, how ungrateful you are. How ungrateful you are. God has been better to you than you could have ever been to yourself. In fact, the, 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 the point that you, not lost, that you haven't even lost your mind yet is a testimony that God is a keeping and a saving God. Hey, 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 the fact that you got here, nobody hit you sidewise, nobody shot at you, nobody robbed you, and you're sitting here, and, and i got to tell you five times to give God some praise, something wrong with that. God has been too good to us to be just coming to church, sitting on our seat, and refusing to give God a praise. Somebody ought to give God a genuine praise for what God has done in your life. You better thank the Lord for what he's already done. No, it wasn't perfect in your life, but it could have been a whole lot worse. You ought to tell the Lord, I thank you for not being fair. Thank you for not giving me what I truly deserved. Thank you for not putting me in places I truly, I should have been in jail. I could have been dead. I could have been a whole lot sicker than I am. But Lord, I want to thank you for where I am right now. My God, I'm glad I got a praise in choir. I wish the whole church would catch on to that spirit and give the Lord a praise this morning. Listen to me. <laughs> God been good to us. I said God has been good to us. God's been good to us. Son, I'm sorry, Lee J. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A few years ago, my son lost control of the car. I'm not, I don't know if we ever told this one. And uh, the car, the tire broke. The tire had busted on the inside. My son, who had not been, he had not been driving long. He was on 635 heading, heading north. There was an on-ramp off of Kansas Avenue that comes around where a lot of the trucks enter onto the I, on I-635. And they give this, and when you get on, you get this um, exit, this entrance ramp, it gives the, the trucks enough time to build up enough speed and momentum so that they can get into the highway lane. My son was coming, and the car, the, the tire popped on the inside. He lost control of the car. He went down in the gorge, 
and up over that entry lane where the trucks build up steam. And I, 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 oh God. And went up over that and then went deep down into a gorge and somehow was able to turn that wheel and the car slid and turned around before it hit the bottom of the gourd. He calls me and says, Dad, I fell, my car, the car fell into a ditch. Y'all know what a ditch is. I said, okay, I'm on my way. Where are you? I'll 35. I'm thinking in my mind, there ain't no ditches <laughs> off of 635. probably shouldn't have told this story. So as I pulled up and I saw the car deep down in this gourd, I saw my son standing there. And uh, I was flooded with emotion, but I had to let him know that I was good because he was good. So I walked down there. time I drive now on 635 North, there's a memorial. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When he went down into the gourd, it left tire tracks. So I could see, I, when I went back around, I could see where he went off of the highway into the first gourd over the entryway and down. And so for about six to eight months, I would drive past there and I would see these same tire tracks. Those tire tracks were the same things as the stones that the Israelites built to let people know that God is still a miracle working God. I don't have to see the tracks no more to know the testimony. So I don't have to worry about uh, God ain't doing, if, 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 if all that God did for me was save my son's life, then that's enough for me to give God all the glory, all the praise, all the honor that he rightfully deserves. I have no right to complain. I have no right to whine. I have no right to moan. I gotta find a place in my mind and say, Lord, I thank you for being good to me and my family. Jesus, help me. I'm going to have to rhyme this up. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Uh, so, this woman, this widow, uh, When the prophet spoke to her, she didn't flinch. She didn't flinch at all. He was a complete stranger to her. He had the nerve to go, and I want y'all to catch this, and tell her to get him some wine. And while she did it, he said, also, make me a cake. Now let's deal with this water issue. Keep in mind that at this time, the nation was in the midst of a drought. It was the very man that they had declared there would be a drought, now asking this woman to give him some water. The, let, me, let me say it again. The prophet Elijah declared to the nation that they would have a drought because of their sins. And so he knows that he is the, 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 the conduit through whom God brought a drought. And he has the nerve to ask a woman for some water during the time that there was a drought that he spoke into existence. The very man that had the authority and the power to declare that there would be rain. And it, on his word alone, the clouds and the barometric pleasure, pleasures rather had no choice in this matter but to obey he asked this woman 
for why? At that time, he had so much anointing upon him that he could have spoken to the clouds and the clouds would obey. Listen, I have been speaking to the clouds all week long. And I've been speaking the words, rain, rain, go away. Please come back another day. The next day come, there's rain again. I don't have enough power, but this brother had enough power to speak to the elements of life through the power of the Holy Ghost in him, and the elements would obey. And he asked this woman to bring him a glass of water. Somebody going to ride there for a long time because, oh, Jesus. Uh, just open up your mouth and say, let there be rain, prophet. Just, you know, you know, you, you, yeah. He asked her to bring him some water. She just obeyed him. She stopped what she was doing. Stopped worrying about the sticks. Went and fetched his brother some water. Who had not told her yet that he was a prophet. I got to bring out through here real slow. I don't want you to miss a morsel. And if that weren't enough, he had to say, and while you're there, um, bring me something to eat also. one thing to ask for some water. He says, listen. She told him, look, man, I, I, um, uh, I don't have much. Right? All I got is a biscuit. I got a handful of flour and a little oil, a oil, little bottle of oil. I'm trying to get enough just to, to fix me and my boy a meal so that we can die. He said, listen, don't worry about a thing. Go on ahead and do what you do what I, uh, you said. I'm going to go ahead and do what you said, rather. We can see this widow had a great confidence in the word from God. He says to her, before you feed yourself and your son, I want you to make me a small biscuit and bring it back here. Then go ahead and make your meal from what's left over for you and your son. This is the word of God of Israel. The drought, and he says, the jar of flour will not run out and the bottle of oil will simply not empty before God sees rain on the land. She trusted the Lord by the, name, by the way of this prophet. Um, and there are many reasons why she should not have trusted him. I mean, he was not a Sidonian. She didn't know Elijah from Adam claim to be a prophet of Jehovah. We got a whole lot of folk claiming to be prophets around here. For centuries, there were con artists, amen, who were getting over on poor little widows. Does it sound familiar? And the game is still going on. We still have so-called prophets pimping old ladies, taking their last bit of their money with the, with the promise that God is going to do something supernatural in their lives. It's an old trick. It's an old game. But in spite of all those, irre those relevant objects, and she uh, obeys God to what she's perceived to be, from what she perceived to be a bona fide prophet, something sat down within her soul. When God talks to this prophet, when the prophet spoke the word into her, her life, rather, she had faith enough to believe that he gave her a word from the Lord. When God is ready to perform a miracle in our lives, it's not uncommon for God to ask us to go beyond our current circumstances and do something that will take you to your very end. He will put you in uncomfortable situations. Anybody ever been there? Duh. Because a miracle requires that we be in a place that is beyond our own ability 
to provide for ourselves. If you could do it for yourself, then it wouldn't be a miracle. But if you want a miracle, see, some of y'all just claimed this morning that you wanted a miracle. You got to be careful what you ask for. Because you got to be at some point a play, at a place where you can't change things yourself. You got to be uncomfortable. You got to, you got to know that you're going to be without. You got to know that you're going to be down to your last. You got to know that all of your second and third options have played out. You got to be at a point where everything is dried up. Folks don't turn their back on you and you don't have anything to do but cry out to an almighty God. And if, he got, and if God does not step in, you are as soon as dead. That's when you are now eligible for what is we call a miracle. A miracle requires a set of circumstances that are beyond our own ability. God performs miracles as a testimony of his power. He performs miracles as a testimony of his authority. God performs miracles not so that we can feel all good and live happily ever after. God performs miracles so that the heathens will know that he is still on the throne. Have you ever have a jar of meal and a bottle of oil. We see this in the narrative. And the more meal and oil that they took, the more meal and oil was added back. It was, in fact, <laughs> what I call the miracle of hot water cornbread. Now, anybody know about hot water cornbread? My mama made Jiffy Mix, and I love, look at her, she rolled her eyes. I love, I still love Jiffy Mix, but when we would go over Aunt Lucy's house on 12th and Haskell, and we would come in through the kitchen, and it seemed like every day she would have some hot water cornbread on the stove. I, I don't know how you make hot water cornbread, but I assume it has to do with some water and some bread. <laughs> Somebody said a cast iron skillet. Well, y'all go talk to uh, Sister Burnett. She'll tell you about how to make hot. All I know is I could always go over Aunt Lucy's house and grab me a piece of hot water. And it wasn't always cold. It was you sometimes like she had just made it. And we get a, I just go in there and grab me a big piece of it. And I love hot water cornbread. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. We're too sedity for that right now. Juicy Jiffy Mix took over the land. Every time she took oil, every time she took meal, it multiplied. Not as it was gathered, but as it was used. So that is to say, the more she took, the more she received. The more she took, the more God supplied. The less she took, the less God supplied, but it never ran out. The more she used it, the more God supplies. Somebody is looking at all that you think that you don't have. Yeah. It's easy to do that, isn't it? Back to that whining nature. How many of us wish we had more? Oh, see, y'all don't want. <laughs> I love, listen, y'all like watching the preacher. I love watching y'all <laughs> and watching your facial expression. Now, because I just told y'all to stop complaining, when I asked the question, how many wish you had more, about three of you raised your hands. <laughs> okay, now it's tell the truth time. Now it's tell the truth time. You're under the dome of protection. Uh, how many of y'all wish you had more? Uh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's what I thought. You got to know those who you labor among. You know, we're family. I've been with y'all a long time. I know my family. Amen. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so God is ready to perform a miracle in their lives. 
God is ready to pour, perform a miracle in your life. Um, if we want, if God wants to keep on reminding us that if we need more meal in our barrel, then we have to give him a little more of what we have right now. If you want more oil, then give him the oil that you have right now. You, see, some of y'all can catch it next week. Some of us are looking at how little we have. And God is saying, if you give me all that you have, I'm going to bless you likewise. In fact, you will never run out if you give me all that you have. I wish we, I'm not even going to try to touch your pocketbooks. I should. This is a good place for me to take out second offering. But I'm not. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, if I could tell you that I guaranteed you that God was going to give you a tenfold return on everything you had in your bank account right now, how many would write a check and bring it right up to me right now? See, see y'all, some of y'all don't trust me. But I thank God. See, see, and that, huh? If I told you that the Lord said, oh, you know what, well, let me tell y'all something. No, 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 I'm going to talk. No, I'm, y'all going to get up off of me. That's what's going to happen. I didn't know we live streaming. Let me tell y'all something. Uh, number one, I'm not a false prophet. But it's a true indication of where our hearts are when we hold on to our possessions more than we hold on to the God that gave us the possession. I'm not trying to shade nobody in here. I'm trying to get us to understand that God is the one who gave us what we got. Yeah, my, you know, my, my, I tell my kids, listen, you, you know, if I ask you for something, your best bet is to give me what I asked for if you got it. Why? Because I'm the one who has been supplying all of your needs while you got the little bit that you got. So if I want one of your cookies, if I want a sip of your pop, amen, if I want a piece of your chicken, you ought to gladly give me what I want. Because the plate that you're eating off of, I paid for it. Your mama paid for it. She cooked it up. She gave me my plate first. So give me a piece of your chicken if you want to continue to have chicken. Now, y'all understand that. Why can't you understand God? God says, give me all that you have. Because I'm the one who gave it to you, Lord. I don't, you know, you always put putting that, that same keyboard. You, listen, put me, uh, give me all that you have. And God is saying, trust me, not Johnson. Trust God. Trust Jehovah Jireh. The one that called Paul, calls Paul to say, my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm not going to work that hard this morning. This is the one meal at a time miracle. One meal at a time. God is still working one meal at a time miracles. I said the God is still working the one meal at a time miracle. Jesus told the disciples to pray this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. That means, Lord, give me what I need just for today. And if you give me what you, I need for today, I'll come back on tomorrow and I'll pray the same prayer. Lord, you did so good on yesterday. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess it. I'm going to say the same thing. Lord, give me again, just my daily bread. Lord, I want you to give me not what I've earned, but I want you to give me what you have promised. I recognize that everything that I have, God, you gave it to me. I believe the widow realized in her soul, I got to give this prophet what he asked for because surely you must be a man of God. You don't need a man of God or a woman of God. All you got to do is open up your ears. Some of y'all are looking at me and wondering, should I do it now? I dare you to begin to clap your hands and give God praise for what he's already done in your life. I believe the more that you praise him, the more God will bless you. The more that you worship him, the more God will turn it around. 
the more that you follow him, the more God will fix things. God will give you one miracle at a time. One miracle today, another miracle tomorrow, another miracle on next week, another miracle on next month, and you'll recognize that everything you have is done by way of miracle. Lift those hands and tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you for my miracle. Lord, I thank you for my daily bread. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. I know he's all right. How many know the Lord is all right? I know he's all right. Say yeah. Give the Lord a praise this morning. When famine, famine's all around, you got to say, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Yes. When others are hungry and thirsty, you got to say, Lord, I will be satisfied. Things not going your way. Lord, I'll be satisfied. There's more month at the end of your money. Lord, I'll be satisfied. Went to the cupboard and the cupboard was bare. Lord, I'll be satisfied. Any way that you bless me. How many have one of those testimonies? It says, any way that you bless me, I will be satisfied. How many believe it? How many believe it? You ought to give God a I will be satisfied praise. Clap those hands and tell the Lord, I'll be satisfied with little or much. I'll be satisfied whether I have a lot or a little. I'll be satisfied whether I'm sick or ill. I'll be satisfied. And when you heal me, I'll be satisfied. Lift your voice and say yes. I want to tell you, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, because some of y'all still haven't got it, you still haven't got it, I'm closing the book, I'm just calm done, but I just stopped by to tell you, if you would praise him with your little bit, if you would praise him with your little money, if... If you praise him with your little oil, if you praise him with your little meal, if you praise him with the one leg that works, if you praise him with the little bit that you have on the inside, if you praise him with all that you have, no matter how small it is, you're setting yourself up for a miracle. You ought to go and encourage somebody and tell them to set themselves up for a miracle by praising God. Tell them, set yourself up for a miracle by praising God. Set yourself for, for a miracle by clapping your hands. Set yourself up for a miracle by doing your dance with the little you have. You may not have much, but give them all that you have. I dare three more people to jump to your feet and begin to give God a praise right through there with the clapping of your hands, the shouting of your lungs. Somebody shout glory! Yeah, yeah. Come on, give God a praise. That's a place to dance. That's a place to dance. That's a praise to dance, y'all. That's a place to give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise, y'all. God a praise. He's working on your miracle. God is working on your miracle. God is working on your miracle. How many are ready to receive it? Give him a praise. I ain't playing. I'm real about this. God is blessing. Turning it around.
You better bless him with what you have. You don't have a lot of strength in your body. Clap your hands the best you can. You got strength in your legs, you ought to just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Lift your hands up. Woo! God of mercy. Lord have mercy. God, be the glory. Let me hear you say it. To God, be the glory for all the things, no matter what it is. For all the things. For all the things. For all the things. To God, be the glory. To God, be the glory. To God. Come on, lift those hands all over the building and say, to God be the glory. Here we go, for all the things. He's the, woo, all the things. He's the, all the things. Good God Almighty, all the things. Lord have mercy. All the things. He's been too good. 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 Hey! God, I praise him. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! It's all right. I need some praises in the backside. And some praises in up here. Who's going to praise him on that side? Who's going to praise him on that side? Yay! Lord have mercy. Good God. Of hey. Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. He's all right. Good God Almighty. One meal at a time. How many will praise him for the one meal? Praise him for one meal. Praise him for the one meal. He'll take care of tomorrow. Yes, he will. Yay! Hey! this morning he's worthy of all the praise that's all I'm trying to let you know I'm trying to let you know if you just 
obey the Lord. When you leave this place, just obey the Lord. When you, when you leave this place, give God your best praise. Give God your best on your job. Give God your best in school. Give God your best when you get home. And see, won't he open up the windows of heaven? Begin to pour out a blessing. Somebody say a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need about 30 more seconds. Give me about 30 more seconds, musicians. Give me about 30 more seconds. Two, three, four. You better get all that you can. When you leave here, you ought to be tired. You ought to give God all that you can while you're here. When you leave here, you ought to be tired from praising the Lord. Yay! Put those hands together. Healing's in the room. Healing is in the room. Listen, I dare you to praise God for your family right now. How many need some of your family members saved? I dare you to give God all your praise for your family this morning. How many got family members? Begin to praise them for your family right now. I guarantee you, he's going to bless your family because of your praise. He's going to bless God, he's going to bless your family because of your praise. For your children, for your auntie Nim, for your children's children. Begin to praise them right now. Watch him bless your children. Watch him bless your whole family. Bless your mother. Bless your father. Y'all not gonna die. You shall live and you shall not die.
you Lord how many love the Lord did a lot of most Sunday I love you Lord I love you Lord oh I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord Must be somebody here that needs a miracle in your life. Must be somebody that needs a miracle in your life here today. Thank you, Jesus. God is ready to step into the atmosphere. He's going to step into the mundane day-to-day -day rut that we are in. God is going to step into time and space and do a thing on your behalf that you could not do yourself. For those that will receive this word, I would ask that you would receive it as the widow woman did and begin to give God all you have. All of your praise, all of your worship. If you need to give more of your finances, that's between you and the Lord. But I believe the Lord is saying that the more that you give to me, not to this guy, but to the Lord God, Jehovah Jireh, the one that we call Yahweh, the more that you give, the more that you're going to get. And if I were you, I'd give God all that I have. Thank you, Jesus. It's a fact. God wants our little so that he could turn our little into a lot. And what I mean by that, he wants to give you more than what you need and even more than what you want. If somebody needs prayer this morning, I would ask you to hurry down to this altar. I mean, hurry. Maybe by the time you get here, somebody will be here to pray for you. I, bet I just ask for you to hurry down to this altar. I mean, with the hurry, with the quickness. Come on. Receive prayer. The choir is singing. Receive prayer.
lift those hands. Lift those hands and say, Lord, I praise you. Right where you are, just lift them and tell the Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lift his hands and say, Lord, I praise you. you pray for the neighbor that you're sitting next to? Would you grab them by the hand and pray for them? Would you love them enough to touch them and pray for them? Would you have enough obedience to trust the preacher and reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand and pray with them, pray for them? Pray that God would bless them. Pray that God would heal them. That God would deliver. God is blessing all over this sanctuary. God is blessing all over this sanctuary. Listen. I've been waiting a long time to get an answer back from this particular college that I wanted to go to to get a PhD. And I didn't want to go to get a master's because I found out that I could pass all of that and save a little bit of money, save a little bit of time and just go straight forward. And so 
they was waiting to tell me something. I was on the wait list, <laughs> and they wasn't saying anything to me. They said, we're still interested in you, and I was like, okay, but I can't wait on you. And, and so I changed my mindset. I said, all right, well, I'll just get a master's online. I'm tired of school anyway. I'll just get it online, and I'll take a little break here. I'll be able to travel, whatever it is I need to do. But God, at the end of the day, have your way. <clears throat> And today, I don't even be on my phone in church, but today I checked my email before Pastor got up. And they said, we want to give you an admission to the PhD clinical psychology program. And you where I have to switch my mindset back to what the first prayer was, which was to get into this program. I thought that this master's program was going to be the way. It was the best thing for me. I don't know when I'm going to get married. I might have to move. But at the end of the day, God's will will be done. He will be satisfied. He will be glorified. And he will provide every need for me. And I just praise the Lord because I love him so much and he's so worthy <laughs> when she said I just praise the Lord that meant we just praise the Lord come on give God a praise this morning <laughs> sister Fernandez I think you started something I see doctors in this church. I see doctors in this church, Brother Ryan. I'm talking about from all kinds of disciplines. I see doc. It's not for everybody. It ain't for everybody. But I see doctors in this house that's going not only to be in this house, but they're going to be a blessing to the community that they serve. Wherever it is, amen, they're going to be a blessing to those. That's what God does. That's part of the qualification process. God qualifies us. God blesses us. Don't give up on your dream just because it doesn't look like. Did you hear what I said? Do not give up on your dream. We long overdue, amen. It don't matter. Don't give up on your dream because God has the final say. And there's going to be some, I think I'm going to have a doctorate one day. I believe one day, one day I'm going to have a doctorate too. Amen. Thank you for those three hand claps. That's all right. That's all right. No, it's not genuine. I thank God for the ones. One of these days, and it won't be very long. I believe God is going to bless us, and he is blessing us. Let us rest on our feet all over this sanctuary. I don't know, do we have anybody that needs a church home before I, before I close out today? It's not going to be long, and I need to go ahead and speak this into the atmosphere. And maybe that's the reason why we stopped seeing the growth. But the growth is coming back to us, amen, to faith deliverance. I don't say things haphazardly, but I just felt an unctioning, an unction of the Holy Spirit to say this, that God is going to increase and folks are going to be coming in by the families. The Burnett started something, amen. I think there's going to be a trickle effect of that. Amen. So get ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready to make some room, amen make some room. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being the God that blesses our daily bread. You deliver it to us and you bless us with it. You are the God of our daily bread. Give every one of us, Lord, that which you have promised. It may not be what we want, but we know, Lord, whatever you give to us, it is good. It is good. 
whatever you give to us, it is good. And we are thankful. Lord, as we figure out and learn how to give our very little, when we figure out how to stop being so selfish and give you what you've already given to us, I speak direct blessings on every obedient body. We all are favored by your grace right now, but I speak an increase of your blessings upon those of us who will take you at your word and do it. We pray this in the miraculous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The church said amen. Would you love your neighbor before you leave? Would you love your neighbor before you leave?